Hey folks, Josh here. Today I'm going to recount my experiences at a couple of Amish auctions. A lot of people are intimidated by the idea of buying a horse at an auction, especially one with a large cultural barrier such as an Amish auction. I myself had had tremendous luck visiting these Amish auctions in Mount Hope, Ohio, first in October of 2020 and again in June of 2021. All the Amish folks that I've met have been kind, welcoming, earnest, honest, and helpful. I've been lucky enough to make friends with a few. One of those friends, Andy Raber, is a hell of a natural horseman, and anyone who thinks the Amish abuse their animals have not met my man Andy or visited his farm. When buying at a horse auction, it helps to be flexible in what you are looking for. I was looking for a well-broke draft or draft cross to pull logs, pull a cart, and to ride. The best part of these auctions are the opportunities to see and compare hundreds of horses. In October of 2020, they auctioned over 2,500 horses in a week. I probably rode 30 horses, drove 10, and picked up the hooves on 150 over the course of that week. Being around so many horses, it got much easier to judge hoof health, conformation, defects, and how well broke the animals were. Even if you don't buy, you can learn a lot. The way the Mount Hope auction works is you get a number at the office. All the horses are numbered as well. A catalog lists the horses in a brief description. The day the horse sells, look for the animal in the barns or on the grounds. Many owners will let you ride and drive the horse yourself. They obviously might not if it's an unsafe situation, but this is a great opportunity to meet the horse and to meet the trainer. After that, you wait for the animal to be called into the ring. At that point, the auction is on. Pick your price and hope for the best. Buying an animal at auction is very exciting. Many deals are there to be had such as this team of beautiful, well-broke mules that sold for $1,000 a head. But all it takes is for two people to fall in love and the prices can get out of control. It's exciting to see when it isn't on a horse that you're interested in. This is one of the first horses that I was interested in. He's a Shire Cross, about 16 hands and built like a brick shithouse. He was a little forward on the bit and not broken to ride in the saddle, so I wasn't that confident with him but he was a very beautiful horse with a beautiful action. He's part of a mismatched team, and when they auction a team, they auction for the price of a single horse. So if he says $5,000, that would be the price of one horse. Afterwards, they'll say choice or double the money. Choice means you can pick which horse you want. Double the money means that you'll take both the horses for the team. If you go with a choice, they'll then auction off the second choice horse afterwards. Kate was the first horse that I fell in love with. She's a young Percheron cross, maybe four or five, but broke to a T. She was almost 17 hands and filling out nicely. The two sisters who trained her were really interesting. Their father bought horses, their brother shooed them, and they trained them. Certainly an exciting life for a couple girls to lead. Kate wound up selling for big money, and it was my first auction heartbreak when she surpassed my budget. After having ridden Kate along with dozens of other horses, I realized that it was less important the exact size, shape, and color of the horse, so long as it moved well, was sufficiently strong, and most importantly, well broke. Kate was perfect. She stood like a statue when still, increased her pace at the gentlest cue, and went wherever you pointed her. After having ridden such a good horse, I decided I would settle for nothing less. And so I met this horse, an eight-year-old Percheron standard bred mare, a little smaller than Kate, but perfectly broke and willing. I talked with her owner and told him I'd like to log with her, and he said while a big Belgian is obviously the ideal logging animal, he had no doubts she could do it all. We even took a cart up a steep embankment on the side of the arena, almost a 45 degree pitch, twice, to show me that she was an earnest and willing horse. When she entered the ring, we wound up going $100 over my budget, but I was downright delighted when I knew that she was coming home with me. Knowing that it's not good to buy a single horse and leave it alone out in pasture, I wound up picking up this pony mule who we named Fritz. He sold pretty cheap, he was about 11 years old, and uh, his description said that he had been coon hunted off of. Uh, an 11 year old boy also rode him through the ring, but my first ride on him didn't last 8 seconds. Um, but I was able to re-break -re him and Fritz wound up teaching me a lot about horsemanship, even though I wasn't expecting that much out of him when I got him. I wound up selling him on about a year later to a family with some younger riders, but um, he was a good experience and a good mule and I'm glad that I grabbed him. My friend Paul that I traveled out to the auctions with also bought a couple of horses. 
he bought the White Percheron uh, to replace a horse that had died on his team. And then he also bought the Black Percheron as a pasture pet for a friend. Both of these were older horses and went at a considerable value. However, I think it's important to realize some of the mistakes that were made in selecting and purchasing these animals. Uh, whereas I had fairly open parameters as far as what I was looking for, um, you know, size, color, gender, you know, age, I wanted a younger horse, but, you know, I really wanted a well-broke animal. Paul was almost too specific. He needed a horse that was 16 hands, plus or minus an inch, white or gray, long tail, percheron, and he also wanted a gelding. All of his stipulations were more about aesthetics than they were about the actual animal. And so by the time we made it to the auction, there was really only one horse that fit the bill out of 500 Percherons that they had there. And there were a couple of mares that actually wound up selling equally as cost effectively, but he was kind of uh, really stuck on getting a gelding. And this horse had been in a barn somewhat neglected for several years. The owner passed away and it was sold by a dealer or by somebody who dropped the animal off, not by the owner or the trainer. So we didn't really know the owner or the man that was selling it. We didn't, we had a brief experience with the horse. And to be honest, the brief experience was rather negative. Uh, we borrowed a harness and tried to drive the horse in a ring and uh, we actually couldn't get the animal to drive well. Uh, and yet Paul thought that he could train the animal, but the animal was also, you know, aged. It was, you know, past the point where we could tell its exact age. And so he got the animal very affordably uh, and it could have worked out well. However, this particular animal had too many past traumas, was a little bit spooky. And, you know, we didn't have the time, energy or skill, frankly, to train it appropriately. And so when you're going to the auction, remember that not every animal that walks by is perfect. There are going to be defects um, and you really want to, you know, check the feet, check the hooves, check the action, ask several people, um, ask the vet, you know, look in its mouth. Uh, and for me, most importantly, make sure the animal has a good temperament, that it's well broke. And if you know it's not well broke, make sure that it's at least gentle. And this was not an entirely negative experience either. Uh, Paul was able to successfully use the animal for horse rides and for some logging and uh, did some weddings with it. However, the animal is just a little bit spooky, a little bit dangerous, and a little bit old and tough to communicate with. It was a little bit set in its ways, and it just wasn't a perfect fit. However, he was able to pick it up at such a value that he was actually able to sell it back in Vermont for a profit to the right circumstance. A good rule is to either know the horse or to know the man who's selling it, or a woman for that matter. And by getting a better feel for either of those two things, you can get a lot of information. And it's also important to know when to walk away. Sometimes you show up, as I did in June of 2021, and the right animal isn't there that day. And it really stinks to drive that far and get all excited, but oftentimes it can be better to walk away than to leave with the wrong animal. And I certainly didn't leave with the wrong animal. The Percheron standard bred mare that I left with, we wound up renaming her Hildy, and she's just been perfect for me. Very eager, forward and strong, but also gentle and under control and understanding. And she's been a perfect for first horse for me. And I'm really grateful that I wound up leaving with her and having the confidence to both trust my gut and to deviate from what I thought that I was looking for. And I've just been really blessed to have her. And I hope that this video was helpful. Uh, if you decide that you want to head to an Amish auction to look for your next horse, um, it's definitely fun and exciting and, and overwhelming. And there's a lot of good opportunities to be had to find a good horse there. And I hope this video helps to make that more approachable for you. And as you can see, our trips out to Mount Hope, Ohio have resulted in these two wonderful, beautiful animals. So obviously there's a lot of success to be had by uh, heading out and visiting there. 
And also, if you wanted to support Hugo and Hildy and our efforts here at Rugged Ridge Forest, head on over to ruggedridgeforest.com and get yourself some wood-fired, organic, pure Vermont maple syrup that Hildy has helped us to pull some of the wood out for, and uh, Hugo's going to be ready to join her in the next coming year or so. But thank you so much for the time and watching our video, and we really uh, look forward to shipping you some of our wood-fired, pure Vermont organic maple syrup. Have a great day.